flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis. How are these properties different and how do they work in flex containers? I'm going to be simplifying that in this video. Also, this video is going to be part of a playlist on my channel where I cover different properties related to CSS flex. Here is an example I have. Div with a class of container, then 3D is the class of item, and then I have this content editable property. And the reason why that is there is so that I can edit the content of this element. The container has a display of flex. Each item has width and height of 300 pixels, and each of the items also have different colors. So by default, when you have display of flex on a container, each of the direct children of that container would have a flex property with 0, 1, or 2. This flex property is a shorthand for flex grow, flex shrink, flex basis. So all of this is the same thing as this in this order. I like writing it like this because it's easier to read and know what I am changing. But the more you become familiar with the flex property, then you can use this on just one line. For the rest of this video, I'm going to be sticking with this three. Now a good way to look at these properties is flex grow stands for max size, flex shrink stands for mean size, flex basis stands for preferred size. They are not exactly the same thing if you look at things very literally, but this is an easier way to understand these properties. Also, by default, flex direction of any flex container is row. When your flex direction is row, these three properties apply to the width of your element. But when the flex direction is column, these three properties would apply to the height. Let's stay with row for now. Here we have width of our element 300 pixels. So if you have more content in the elements, the elements width doesn't change. And if the elements cannot contain the content, then the content overlaps. This takes priority over the flex basis. But if I comment this width now, and then we have a flex basis of auto, watch what happens. First, you see that the boxes become smaller. Well, it got smaller because this auto says what size is enough to contain this content. And this width is enough to contain this content. That's why it got smaller. But watch what happens when I add more content. It increases Increases. I went to the next line by pressing the enter key on my keyboard. If the content increases horizontally, well, the box also increases. Now, what if we had a flex basis of 300 pixels? By doing this, it means that our items would have a minimum of 300 pixels. But does that mean it's only going to stay at 300 pixels? Let's find out. Well, you can see that even if the minimum is 300 pixels, the width still increases as the content increases. So flex basis in this case is not not exactly the same thing as width. With width, as we saw, the size doesn't change. With flex basis, it says preferred size, but it doesn't mean this is the size that the flex container would use for that child. That size can change depending on the content. What if we now had a flex basis of 10 pixels and we come here? Well, this doesn't look like 10 pixels, but what if we had a width of 10 pixels? Oh, you can see what 10 pixels actually looks like. So the width is a fixed size applied on the element but the flex basis like i just explained is just like i would prefer 10 pixels if 10 pixels is possible but if 10 pixels is not enough for the content the element is going to be wider but if i cleared everything from this item one you can see item one is now beginning to look like 10 pixels because that looks enough now i'm going to keep my flex basis at 300 pixels let's move on to flex grow by default flex grow is zero why do i say this is the maximum size well this is how you tell the flex container how each of the children under that container should grow. What if I had a flex grow of one? You can see what happens. Our flex basis is still 300 pixels, which is supposed to be the preferred size. But because we have given each of the children, each of the items, flex grow of one, if I should change this back to zero, you can see all this space that is left here. Once I put this at one, then the flex container is going to distribute that space equally for the three items. And if I should reduce the width of my screen, you can see that this the width is reducing because it grows based on the space that is available in the container until it gets to the point where the elements cannot reduce any further. But what if the first child has flex grow of one, but the second child has flex grow of two? Well, it means the second child is going to grow twice as fast than the first and the third child. So if I should refresh this, if I make my screen wider, you can see the difference here. This one takes up 
more space than this ones here so that is how grow defines how each of the elements should grow or let me make it five so that it's more obvious you can see it's occupying more space because it's growing five times faster than this element here and for the end child three if i should put a flex grow of three then flex is going to do all the calculations to ensure that this takes much space obviously followed by this then followed by this one which has a flex grow of one you can see the difference here you can see the second one is bigger followed by the third one followed by the first one let me take away the flex grow three so this is how grow works when i say maximum size maximum size means if if there is more space for you to grow in your size then grow now let's move on to flex shrink flex shrink has a default value of one and that means all these items are going to shrink at the same rate based on the space available or not available so let's say i comment this flex grow of five now if i should collapse this you see that each of the items are reducing at the same rate until it gets to that point where it cannot it can no longer reduce at this point this is less than 300 pixels let me even make it obvious by saying 400 pixels this is less than 400 pixels that's because these things are shrinking but if i put zero for my flex shrink which like i said is the minimum size now look it no longer shrinks everything now has a minimum width of 400 pixels and because they can no longer fit in the container now you get that overlap we have said do not shrink you see that because there is now much space even though our flex basis is 400 pixels because we have a flex grow of one it grows more than that one so you can see the part that flex shrink is playing with flex shrink of one for example if this should get bigger in width you see that the third item is reducing and reducing until it gets to that point where it cannot reduce any longer if we had flex shrink of zero if this content increase you can see the right items get smaller for some time but then it gets to that point where it hits that basis and it cannot get smaller again and then it stays the same and just like we did for flex grow we can have different values for flex shrink so by default our flex shrink can be one and then we can say that the first child should shrink five times faster now if i should reduce this you're going to see that the first child shrinks faster than the rest because we have that flex shrink of five and the rest have flex shrink of one we can also say that the flex child two should shrink and then we have two flex is going to do all those calculations this is going to be five times faster two times faster one times faster and let's see if you can notice the difference the first one shrinks faster the second one is shrinking but we can't really see it then followed by the third one so you can play with the flex grow and the flex shrink in different ways let's say you wanted item one and item two to grow faster than item three depending on the space where well, your first child can have that flex grow of one the second child can also have flex grow of one and then for the third child you can have your flex grow of zero so now if you do it like this you see that this one stays at the flex basis let's make this flex basis smaller so if i made this 300 pixels that stays at 300 pixels so even when i increase the screen like this you see that the first one and the second one are growing but but the third one stays that way because it is not growing and this is how these three properties affect the sizes of your elements now like i said these properties apply to the width when it is flex direction row but let's quickly see an example with flex direction column sorry this should not be on the item this should be on the container the direction of the flex is on the container not on each of the items let me add my width back and let me put the width to 200 pixels if i put flex grow of zero this 100 pixels each of them are going to have that basis of 100 pixels and of course like we saw earlier the height can grow if the content increases and if i should put the flex grow of one back we don't really get that because we haven't specified the height for the container the width of the container is 100 percent but we can specify a height of maybe 500 pixels that's too small 1000 okay so if i specify that flex grow you see that the items grow and maybe i put the flex shrink to be zero and the flex basis to be 300 pixels and if i come back here and i add to this you can see that these items do not shrink less than this 300 pixels here it's very important to know that based on the flex direction these properties can either be affecting the width or height of your element but usually this will be seen as row now sometimes you'd also see some people do something like flex one flex one is short for flex one one zero grow shrink basis even if the basis is zero that also doesn't matter 
here because if zero cannot contain the content zero would not be used if our flex basis here is zero and maybe i remove the flex grow to zero too and i also remove the width of 200 pixels you can see that zero is not going to be used because zero cannot contain our content so when you do flex one still stands for one one zero so you are saying each item should grow at the same rate should shrink at the same rate and then each of the items the size is going to be based on the content so the size of this red is going to be based on the content size of this green is going to be based on the content size of this blue is going to be based on the content so i hope these three properties are now clearer to you honestly in flex containers these properties are very powerful as you can see for controlling the different elements you have in your flex containers but at the same time they can also be confusing so i hope that this video has simplified things enough for you i also recommend that you try this out maybe on the project that you're working or just play around based on the code that i've used here to see how these properties work if you enjoyed this video please give it a like share with others subscribe for more videos like this and also check out my css flex playlist where i go through how many other properties related to flex work together in flex containers